Hey here, folks. Move along. It's the Todd and Aaron daily Stream. streaming Come thing. On, you can do this. How are you? How are you? Thanks for joining us today. Hey, by the way, today, uh, you're watching live, uh, jump on Facebook. I want to see, uh, I want to talk to you. Can you? Would you? Thanks. Uh, do we look at the mountain cam? No, but we should probably should because we need to enjoy its beauty. Are you going to? There it is. There it is. Bre brought to you by Brio Technologies. Look, it's the glorious morning mountain cam. And there's still nobody on the golf course. Now, this is like run by the, the city of Sta South Jordan, right? State. S S yeah, state yeah, city or of city. South Jordan, I think. Yeah. And there's nobody on the freaking golf course. Actually, there's I'm a, a little confused. News story the other day. News story that mm -hmm. we have the lowest green fees in the United States of America. Oh, I've heard that. I mean, it used to be like, here's $13. I'm going to play 84 holes of golf. And it's all subsidized by the cities. And then, of course, they started raising rates a little bit. And was like, this is the worst thing that's it's ever happened. It's not the worst and thing. And you're like, it's and, 300, 400 bucks. And ever. they said, for the percentage of people who golf, as opposed to the rest of the population, a lot of these golf courses could be used for other things. More swimming pools would be good. Maybe a rec park, maybe, I know, you know you're all about the gardening. Maybe they could do more community gardens. This is true. There's a community garden by our house, but we didn't jump in fast enough. We didn't. So we did not get so a spot. just go up and look at all the ripening tomatoes and try not to climb the fence and get over the other side. I think they hate that. They do hate just that. Just so you know. What else? Since most of them are our neighbors, if they catch you, that's going to make the 4th of July barbecue <coughs> very uncomfortable. Um, gambling. The Supreme Court... Uh, said it was unconstitutional to ban it, and so I'm not sure on all the deals. It's like 20, 20 or 30 states out of the country have some kind of lottery or mm -hmm. things like mm -hmm. that. And yeah. They were dealing mostly with uh, sports betting, like track betting and baseball and you know all the soccer and all that stuff. Boy, that's hard to keep track of. I mean, it really is. Well, also, also if the state does this, it's years down the road, I'm sure. But uh, if they do it, a lot of states join another lottery that's like the one in uh, Evanston that includes like seven states. Like the Powerball one is right. like, what, 20 and states? Or, we'd yeah. get a percentage of that back to buy swing sets. I don't think they spend it on swing sets. I don't think so. Um, but uh, so that's down the road. Interesting. So that would include Utah. That is an option for Utah. Yeah. Now it's up to the states. That really, I can't see that happening here. And then the creepy things happen. Are we going to talk about that later? i got to check really quick. The, the creepy things? The creepy things about the, the stuff being put on the ballot. Do okay, we have yeah. that? We'll talk about it later. Because it's, um, it's, it's become crazy. Yeah, this is really People harsh. meeting people at midnight behind county buildings. Well, I mean, as a matter of fact, I should see it right here, and I am not seeing it. Do you have it? I it's, have it. Do you want to talk about right it now? It's right there. It's up to you. Since we're talking about this stuff, we can do that. Mike, we're just going to switch and talk about the clashes with the, the new ballot because there's a lot of stuff heading major issues heading intimidation to the fraud deceit so basically people there's a bunch of ballots and, and you see person here uh, the latest round of people are going around and they are asking people if they'd like to withtract their signature on the thing for mar uh, medical marijuana and so the pro side is like videotaping them doing it and how they're kind of like Misleading them, misleading. And, they're, and they're using they're using information that isn't accurate, right. and they're trying to pressure them into changing their their vote. Their exactly. Signature. And then there was deadlines of when these people they had to turn in a certain amount of signatures. Now the people who are pro medical marijuana um, did all this work, and they were people like, whoa. They would have to be very very careful with a controversial vote like that. You have to make sure all of your ducks are yes, you know, put together. And so uh, the the anti uh, cannabis people. Uh, they got all theirs together, too, and uh, they missed the deadline. So they went down, to, went down to the clerks, all this stuff, and they went, here it is. And he goes, we're closed. You, you have 5 o'clock. So then. Wow. The pro-medical marijuana people spotted one of the clerks late at night meeting people in the back parking lot. Mm -mm. Like they were trying to drop the stuff off. It's oh, that's crazy. So funny. Really? Yeah. Do they have like physical evidence of this? You know how I am with facts. 
Everybody but these are the things that are happening, and it's like becoming crazy. And people are like, "No, you can't. Yes, I can." Oh yeah, we'll do this cloak and dagger stuff. Uh, but I think it's really interesting. Wow. Uh, here's that's a, amazing. Uh, well, Utah United, we really like Jim Bradley. I enjoy him a lot. And of course, this right. is uh, not Bradley. Forgive me, um, Jim. He is our former yes state ahead. senator's yes. son, and he's goofy. And he was great, but they did, they're they doing the Utah United Party, and he had a lot of complaints about the fact that they were switching party affiliations to un, unaffiliated or to Republican uh, people in his party, and it was making the party look smaller than it was. Yeah. So now they're having to investigate that. It's like a lot of really weird stuff. Uh, one, of our friends, one of our friends, uh, Doug Rice, is very active in this because his lovely— Jim Bennett. His, no, Doug Rice. I know. I oh, what, Jim Bennett. Oh, you remembered his name. Sorry. Yeah. Doug and he, Rice, who we love. Former Doug Rice. firefighter, amazing father, devoted to his daughter. How old, how old is his daughter? She's like um, she's, 14, 15. She's, no, she's a little girl. She's a little thing, but she's, I think, 19 or so. She's 18, 19. So anyway, she... Um, uh, she's a buttercup. She was suffering uh, 20, seizures, 20 seizures a day. And then with the help of um, uh, CBD oil and such... Uh, it's down to like five. And so here is proof that it works for that family. So I just think it's... Well, the, one of the things that people fight, and I've seen the lack of communication about this, parents who use CBD oil for their children, CBD is a non-psychotropic. It's the second part of... Of uh, medical marijuana, Which THC means? is the element that gets you high. And does it have um, any THC in it? It probably has around one or two percent. No, it's, it's got, 0.03. It, it goes as high as one or two percent, and still works fine. And then it's 13 to 17 percent CBD oil. Right. So your child is not getting high. Your right. child is using. They're using an element that literally locks into the brain receptors like a key. If you watch this um, on MRIs, it's actually beautiful to watch. It literally fits in perfectly. Right. So this is some of the things that they've seen, and I think there's a lot we're, of confusion we're, about... We're kind of pro. Do you get that feeling? Our sons use it. Yeah. We're going to say yeah. for the rest of yeah. all time. But I think, yeah, and the, the church has got concerns, and I understand that. And I love the one, not, not from the church, I love the one. They might be misused. It might be misused. It's like like opioids aren't. Yeah, you're remembering the opioid crisis we're all working through Good right now. Grief. So anyway, no, but it's it's interesting. So of us. like fraud and cheating and like backtracking and like meeting in shadowy parking lots. I love this stuff. It's like we're Chicago. This is very exciting. It's, and the, and so all this stuff is going, and they still. Um, uh, after the church, some random surveys were taken, mm -hmm. and after the church's announcement, uh, the number stayed the same, 60-40. Really? Four. That's very interesting. Interesting it is, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I, I'm sure people are torn, but it, that's very cool to see. How? Now, this does how, not surprise how, me. How, how honest is America? Well, I can't help but think we would do awesome on this. Uh, Mark Rober is an uh, interesting guy. He wanted to create a social experiment yes. where... It was Operation Wallet. And dropped. he had this, he did a great job of this. Now, he and his helpers dropped 200 wallets in 20 cities in North America. May so I? this wasn't like a random thing. May I? Mm -hmm. The uh, wallets were identical. There was a fake ID without a picture in each one. They had like a blockbuster card. They had $6 in American money and $30 in Filipino money. So the whole package was worth eight bucks. And so, they crushed it, trying to make it, and then, this is the awesome thing, they put a picture of a puppy. So there was some kind of... Emotional connection. Connection or, to this yeah. wallet, and the puppy has to go back to its owner. So, really well done. That's really so awesome well done. And then, when he did this, the finder was given a phone number inside, hey, if lost, please call. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then they analyzed the call as well and seeing if there's any sim, uh, similar traits to the call. Interesting, of, of the kind of people or yeah. the personality type that would return the Age wallet. didn't matter, which is cool. Okay, really? so let's find out what, what we're doing. That's pretty amazing. So it goes through all the things that you, that you would imagine. Uh, it's interesting. Um, the social experiment results showed that 40% of the people who returned the wallets were not religious. Right. So that really wasn't a factor uh -uh. they played in. Uh -uh. Um, it's pretty cool. Basically, it, what he came up with is, is that you, Salt Lake City was the second highest city in returning wallets, which makes me never mind. Okay, <laughs> never mind. Here's one that's interesting. You know the number one. <coughs> um, let me guess. 
uh, make like a southern a southern religious state. Um, One of the most impoverished cities in the United States. Where? Detroit. No. Yeah. No. Really? I'm amazed. They were they were scrupulous about returning returning to Wallet, and uh, for them <coughs> they said they said hey six bucks is like. You know, that's that's food. That's yep. that's your transportation yep. to work, yep. and that stuff came up. That small, that it was a really, it's a minuscule amount Amazing. of money for most of but, us. But they knew that it was a, that it could be a difference for something for someone. A lot of it also is effort. You know, you think about your busy life, and here's this wallet. You know, this wallet sitting there next to your computer. And you're like, I just don't have time for that. I just got to do my work. I feel guilty, but you know what I probably would have done? I would have probably picked it up and, like, stuck it on, like, the windowsill by the ground where I saw it. Because I would assume that somebody was going to come back trying. Like you do with hubcaps. If you're, if you're, yeah, but if, you're lose, if you've lost something, you know, you retrace your path. And right. I would assume someone would retrace jackets, their path. Jackets, you see with jackets and stuff? Mm -hmm. Hubcaps, they lean them against the tree where they lost it. No, they do. Have you ever seen this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you you've hit a bump, you go, oh my gosh, on my way home. I oh no, I've done that. I put yeah, I put a hubcap yeah. kind of propped it up, assuming yeah. they'd come back That's for so it. Funny. Uh, Thirty so out of forty wallets were returned. So I guess that makes I'm. Does that make me bad? For what? That I wouldn't call them and do it. I would just try to put it where they would see it. No, because we've done it a couple times. Because I would. We assume, made phone calls like yeah, this. Yeah, we have. Yeah. But now I'm wondering if I'm just too passive. Look what you did for the hubcaps of America, though. Well, that's something. It is I feel true. better about myself. You should. You should feel better. Yes. All right, where are we going from here? All right. Um, We're all over the place. Well, the Draper thing. This is, I want to talk about the Tesla thing just because this is so interesting. It's gotten, of course, national, international news now because of the autopilot and the fact that the woman was off reading her phone. Wait, wait, yeah, so the, she crashed there's an admission now. Uh, 60 miles an hour. Yeah. She, uh, she was lucky. I can't 60 believe, miles an hour. I cannot believe that she only got a broken ankle. That tells you something about their uh, their crashability, right. their safety crash. Also, she went into the back of a fire truck. So she had emergency services there on the spot. Right away. So she admits the fact that she was on her phone. I mean, autopilot, you have to have your look. hands just off the wheel. Okay. You have to. Can you put that picture back up for a minute? She shot okay. underneath it. This is 60 miles an hour. I know, That's right? not a freeway. Mm -hmm. That's like... That may be somewhere like Redwood Road, but that's not even a freeway. That's not somewhere where you could even go 60 miles an hour. I can't make that judgment. Okay. Sorry. Okay. But look at that. Bangor. I mean, I did pay attention to where the crash was, but that's not a 60 mile an hour zone. Maybe that part doesn't really matter. But the point it is, is, yeah, she did have the autopilot on. Right. She was. South Jordan. Paying no attention. She, and, and that's the deal. They're, they're saying um, there's a Cadillac commercial out. Where the guy's like leaning back, like smoking a pipe or something, and you're like, "No, it's not. That's not what you're doing. You sh should be sitting up, you're right?" You're still supposed to be paying attention. And but. the car will usually. This car didn't even break. So that's what's so interesting. So that shows that there's a fairly substantial flaw in the Tesla model. It's the beta version. Who wants to be the beta? Well, and that's the trouble, though. And I think that Elon Musk has actually tried to emphasize that, like. We're still rolling out features. Nothing's perfect. Right. Yet. And people, you're right, are going, me, drive. And it's like, no, 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 I, I, no I'm, I'm not trusting a 2,000-pound vehicle to drive itself. There will be a day, mark my words, there will be a day that you pull out of your driveway, you get onto I-15, you hit the magic button, you're going back and take a nap. There will be a day. I'm too much of a control freak. And especially if I had the kids in the car, I could not do it. I could not sit back and take my hands off. I couldn't do it. There, there will be a day that, that you just jump in and Uber shows up, and there's, no, there's not even a place for them Uber driver to sit. It's just the car shows up. I just... It's going to happen. I'm a control freak. I can't it's do gonna that. It's going to happen. Could you, trust, could you trust a computer system with our children in the car? Oh, and you bring the kids. Miles an hour. You're gonna play the kid card. I'm totally gonna play the kid card. <sighs> but I still find that weird. She was checking her phone and didn't even look up to go. Well, that seems to be a fire truck. It's not even like it was a low slung vehicle that she may not have noticed. Right. A fire truck is a fairly substantial piece of machinery that you see. I I don't know. She was just looking down. She wasn't looking up. And I just I just picture uh, we're gonna go to Seattle. We're gonna drive to Seattle. 
we fill up the car, we get on the road, we push the button, it drives, it lets us know when we need gas. We wake up from our slumber on a mattress in the back of a van, and then we get up and we go get gas, and then we get some Slim Jims and some tater chips and some of those circus peanuts, the stale ones that you love. Don't taunt me with the circus and peanuts. And we get back on the road and we go You're take, not investing me in this vision just because you threw in the circus peanuts. Go take another nap. And besides that, the mattress in the back of the van sounds uber creepy and like something you probably drove in college. What's that? The mattress in the back of the van sounds uber creepy like that's something you drove that's in college. The, that is the vehicle when I was in high school that scared the boogers out of parents when you picked their daughters up for dates. Gee, I wonder why. Do you remember? If you remember, they had those round bubble windows, and some had triangles, and other ones had, because they had no windows, right? Those little windows in the back corner. And you'd open it up, and they'd all be carpeted, and your, their dad would take a gun to your head, and then you wouldn't go anywhere. Do you remember this? Yeah, you're my child bride. Yes. <laughs> All right, we're gonna there's almost times I really don't want to know more about you. I mean, there's times that I really feel like, you know, I probably know enough to not I didn't scared. own a van. I you, didn't. You owned a Pinto. I owned a Pinto. I, that was my first car, too. Which shows that our parents hated us because of the whole explosive nature of the accidents that they had. You know, one or two massive explosions per state doesn't necessarily mean you're going to die a hideous death. Right? AM, AM radio. Yeah. All right, All right, let's move on. Daisy's got news in the Gephardt Daily Newsroom. She is brought to you by Fink and McGregor Mortgage is Made Simple. Look, in today's real estate world, if you're trying to buy a house, honey, you have got to do this now. You have got to be pre-qualified, ready to go. Go to fink-mcgregor.com and they will get you started. Brio Technologies, they are experts in lighting, sound, and video. Bring your business into, well, like this century and go to brioaudiovisual.com and by the new Millennium Financial Group. And look, if you have no idea where you're supposed to even get started and making sure that you have some kind of a retirement, that your kids have some help, maybe go to college. These are the people who sit down and get you started. Uh, Utah's Financial Planner.com. Daisy, my dear, what's going on today? Thanks, Todd and Aaron. Hello, everyone. Here's what's making news on Tuesday, May 15th on GetPartDaily.com. One teenager is dead and four others injured after an early morning crash in Taylorsville. Unified police told Gebhardt Daily officers twice encountered the vehicle involved driving recklessly. The Ford Explorer, with six people inside, was near the intersection of Atherton Drive and 4500 South when it suddenly changed direction and intentionally targeted an oncoming SUV. The Ford Explorer rolled, killing a teenage girl who was riding in the front passenger seat and critically injuring three others. Another passenger was unhurt. The driver of the Ford Explorer, believed to be an adult, ran from the scene and was later captured and taken to hospital to be evaluated. The occupants of the targeted SUV were uninjured. Centerville police have arrested a male suspect and interviewed and released a female person of interest after a home burglary that occurred Thursday. Police said a Taurus 9mm semi-automatic handgun in a small black case was stolen from the home in addition to a bicycle. Centerville Police Department officials said Donald Shane Andrus was arrested after a tip was submitted. Andrus was located in Salt Lake County and booked into jail over the weekend. Police also located and interviewed the person of interest, Stephanie Diderickson, Monday. She was released after the interview. And a Tesla Model S that crashed into a stopped fire truck was operating in autopilot mode, Utah police said. The 28-year-old driver told police she was looking at her phone as the car slammed into the truck at about 60 miles an hour in South Jordan. The woman suffered only a broken foot in the crash, and Tesla CEO Elon Musk said that was the real story, the vehicle's safety. It's super messed up that a Tesla crash resulting in a broken ankle is front page news and the 40,000 people who died in US auto accidents alone in the past year get almost no coverage, Musk tweeted. What's actually amazing about this accident is that a Model S hit a fire truck at 60 miles an hour and the driver only broke an ankle, the CEO continued. An impact at that speed usually results in severe injury or death. And time now for a look at your Wasatch Front weather, brought to you by Brio Technologies, Utah's top audiovisual specialists. And also by Magic Wash, home of the long-lasting ceramic car wash with outlets in South Ogden and also in Layton.
Temperatures will hit the mid 70s Tuesday, and there's only a small chance of rain. Temps then hang out in the mid to upper 70s for the rest of the week, with rain moving in Friday and Saturday. That's it for now. For more news and weather 24 7, go to getpartdaily.com. Todd and Aaron, back to you. All right. Thank you, Daisy. Um, just talked to friends yesterday that just went through the situation. Now, I've been telling you about this. We both have. If you're in the house uh, market for a house uh, and you show up with without being pre-approved. Uh, They'll you, go, bless your heart. Oh, you can yes, just walk out. Yeah, little sweet people, get out. Uh, and somebody else gets to buy it. I mean, it's just that way. We know tons of houses that have gone on the very first day. On the very first uh, visit from the people, walk through it. Our house had five offers the first day. This yeah. is a, this is a market where you cannot screw around. If you are not pre-qualified and have a mortgage ready to go, and the, we're you're not out. we're not talking pre-qualified like yeah we think you got it. No, this has actually gone through the paperwork. You're all set to go. Fink and McGregor, um, they they are going to set you up to do this. And uh, Jeff Stout is the guy who's going to help you. All you have to do is go to their website. They have a four minute quiz. They'll see if which kind of uh, mortgages that you qualify for, and even if your if your credit score isn't where you want it to be, they can also help you out there. Credit score is as low as six hundred. So now you walk into the place, you go, "I love this place. We'll buy it. My children are there. Here's my dog. We're gonna put a swing up while we're waiting. Would you like something in our kitchen? Because it's your house. See how it works, Finger McGregor. Go go check them out. Think-McGregor.com. Yeah. All, All right. Tell me something good. I know you've got a great story today. Favorite story of the and, month. And I, I am so noble because I really wanted to do this story, but I shared it with you because I knew the U.S. gadget guy would and totally I dig this. I love you. You would totally dig this. Katikara, he is an Indian man, a student actually, uh, studying uh, engineering. He was on a flight, and uh, there's also a 30-year-old Dutchman on the flight named Thomas. <laughs> Easy name. <laughs> so, so, uh, so they're on the flight and they're they're making a jump from Germany and they're heading they're heading back to India and uh, all of a sudden there's a problem and, and Katakara realizes there is uh, something medically wrong with the person in the seat ahead of him. Can I say something really quickly? Please do. I know this. I'm going to love this man already because the scarf he is wearing is, is? from the Gryffindor house on Harry Potter. Is it really? He is wearing a Gryffindor scarf from Harry Potter. I thought it was a soccer team. I love this man so much. Keep that going. That is so funny. So anyway, he's an engi- he's an engineering uh, uh, student, like I said. Um, the man in front was diabetic, stage one, and had not taken. He had a pump, and he had not done. He left it at customs. Ooh. And the flight is a long flight. That's terrifying. Yeah. And they're about an hour and a half out from turning around. Take still take an hour and a half to get back. And this guy's like sugar levels going through the going through the roof, and so they say. Is there a doctor? And the doctor steps up, steps up, and he says, "Yes, I can." And he goes, "I'm diabetic." Wow! So so far, this is extremely. Pretty, Isn't it? I mean, fortunate. What, what can go wrong at this point, right? Something can always. And go so wrong. The, the doctor took out his pen, and he figured if I give him enough, we can drop the level down. We'll be good for the hour and a half flight. He goes to use his pen. It does not work. Oh man! It doesn't work. He's like, "Why is this not working?" And the engineer student. This is the killer part. He's from the house of Gryffindor. I love this man. He goes online because they have the systems, you know, the Wi-Fi. Uh, He goes online and he looks up the maker of the device that the doctor has, the Mm -hmm. one that's not working. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he goes through and he goes down and he goes to the drawings and they show the cutaways. There's the schematic. And and all the parts and all the things that go to the, to the, the unit, right? And he goes through and he goes, okay, and looks at the doctors, opens it up, and he says, you're missing a spring. He checks both. You're missing a spring. Stewardess comes over. I need a pen. Flight attendant. I need a ball. Yeah, I need a ballpoint pen. And so she goes back and collects them, and he puts them down like this, and he opens them up, and he looks at those springs, right? And he go click, 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 and he goes through, and he goes this one, and he fit it in there perfectly. This is so cool. I can't even stand this story. He closes it up. They give him the shots. They stabilize them, and they travel on. To Gryffindor, or wherever that place is. That is so cool. Is that a great story? You he, raised that boy he, right, Mom. He That's goes amazing. and finds a schematic. It's not a schematic. They call it a blow up, where it shows all the different parts of this thing, you know, and, and then he just said, Oh, you're missing that. And he fixed it, and they lived. That's amazing. You're welcome. 
<laughs> and in a somewhat pressing emergency-based situation, not even where like, oh, you think about this and see what you can do. Free like, soda is all around. Looks like this guy's about to die. So there's, you know, a certain amount of like time free, sensitive issues here. That's free amazing. Free for everyone. I think they all deserve that. Hey, I'd be throwing could, them out like confetti. We've got this thing going, and we have for a while Christopher's. Christopher's, uh, it, basically it's our way to bribe you and say thank you for sharing the show and annoying many people. Uh, we it's very, really appreciate it's very that. satisfying to do that. So we're giving away dinners. Dinners for four at Christopher's, the prime steakhouse in Salt Lake City. And I'm telling you, you will not be treated any better anywhere. And they could be really mean to you, actually, and you wouldn't care. Because you'd still be in the middle of the, the filet going, I can't even stop. The food is just so good. But anyway, if you want to do that, just leave a note here. Or the easiest way is just to... To share. Just share the show today and you're automatically entered. We'll go through the shares. We'll pick one. You win on Friday. Boom, you're on your way. It's that simple. So just share the show today. That's all you need to do and you're automatically entered. If you're on the Get Part Daily, Get Part Approved Facebook pages, share. If you're on the Todd and Aaron page, you can thumb your nose at us and then share. It'll all work out great. Raise your hand if you like allergies. Are they killing you? They're killing me. All right, so anyway, coming up next, the best picture that I have seen in six months really besides our kids you know this sounds um, very alluring how come oh i don't my know gosh, about oh this? my gosh oh my gosh it, it, it's the story is great I'll, we'll show you next I'll show you next you're taunting me we're brought to you by fink and mcgregor mortgages made simple just head to fink-mcgregor.com take four minutes to answer some questions and you'll get a great idea about mortgages that you're eligible for and by Stay Fit Wellness Clinic. Go get a personalized health analysis. This is the time to get back in shape. Feel better, feel younger, and without a ton of new medications at stayfitwellnessclinic.com. And we Welcome are back. back. Welcome back to the Todd and Aaron Daily Stream. Of course, Brian. There's still nobody on the golf course. I know. Doesn't anyone golf in South Jordan? I don't even know why this is annoying me as much know. as it is I now. Don't but know. Now tell me about this picture and how amazing this story is. What do you know about China? A lot give, me of give me three things that you know about China. Um, the Terracotta City, which I think is the most amazing archaeological find of all time. Got the Great it. Wall of China, which is another incredible one of the wonders of the world. Population. Um, their new industrialization that's uh -huh. created this whole right. new middle class. And the industrialization has brought what to the cities? Massive pollution. Massive pollution. Uh, they say that if you're a traffic uh, traffic cop in uh, a, chi a large Chinese Listen city, it cuts off your life expectancy by 15 years because of the pollution. Because you're sitting in it the mm -hmm. whole time. Well... China, uh, when they go, they go big. And so, like, big here, country. like here, don't show the photo yet. Um, so here we have the green bikes, and you can go, and we, uh, we work downtown. We had a big window. We could look, and they would bring new bikes to it because a lot of places people would always take them from here and always go someplace else and not really come back. So you have to move things around. So the van bit. is constantly moving them around and st stacking them and, and doing all this stuff. And it, they're so easy. Uh, you basically you'd walk up with your phone and you'd have the app and you'd go like this and you'd go click, the bike would unlock, you take the bike and off you go. And then when you get someplace, you would park it and then you'd lock it again. It's so cool. What a great system. When China does something, they do it big. So what happened is, one company started. No, they're making some change on this, right? Yeah, I mean, one, that's a great option for so many people who work inside the city. Right. It's like, great. Then another one started. And then another. And then another. And then another. Those bike and then share the bottom, programs are really rocking, huh? And then the bottom fell out. This is what they ended up with. Show them. Now, this is a shot. That's like eight different bags. Sure. The shot we Thanks. cannot show you, the shot we cannot show you is a pile of bikes just laid on top of each other, which is 30 feet tall and about 40 yards long. Are these the, the bikes that are unused or finally worn out or just that now that the bottom fell out, they're like pushed they Bankruptcy. They're not going to get them. They started parking them in places that they started clogging streets and stuff. Free bike. So they just come along and they grab them and they throw them back of a dump truck and then they take them and make this pile of, I'm serious. When That's I say, so wasteful. When I say 30 feet tall and they're just thrown on top of each other, it is an amazing sight. But That's so sad though. That's such a waste. I mean, that's such a waste. And they all work. 
That's I, that's what I mean. Right. It's awful. Oh man, but it's thirty feet high. Picture a big pile of bikes. All right. Now quadruple it, and then another quadruple, and then an, it, add some bits on top of that. I would say there'd be two thousand bikes in that pile, maybe three. Incredible. 3, and that's just one of the piles. That's just one of the piles. And they all work. That's the, the killer. The sheer of that makes me so sad because it's such a good option. Oh, uh, more bad news. Uh, if you ate at a Chili's Shh, restaurant. I don't want bad news anymore. Sorry. Sometime in the last two months, um, you might want to go and change all of your passwords, keep an eye on your bank account. Ch -ch -ch Chili's. Maybe go put an alert on your credit why, thing. Why, 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 why? Um, they, they were decent about it, but apparently uh, there was an unauthorized access or acquisition of payment card data. But they basically said, as we learned, some of our guests' payment card information from certain restaurants were compromised. At least they were decent about it. As soon as they learned about the breach on May 11th, they popped out. They started telling everybody. And apparently they're still not sure if all the locations were affected. But there's a lot of there free jalapeno poppers No, but they said that they would do fraud resolution and credit monitoring services if you did turn out to be impacted. You know uh, what? We still popped up with some more of those fake credit card offers at our house literally this week thanks to Experian <coughs> and that one. That and, and, and they come under someone else's name that we used to know, so we think we're just going to open up accounts under them all. Yeah, let's just go sign for everything. It's going to be fun. Be fun. <laughs> all right, well, here's some good news. This is actually better news then. Um, you know, we had just talked about Operation uh, Wallet Drop and seeing how everybody did and how Salt Lake City came in number two and we're yeah. really proud. Yeah. Well, there's more. We are the most charitable state in the nation, meaning that we give more in terms of volunteer hours and time, uh, goods and services, and more importantly, in finances than anybody else okay. in the country. Um, does this have to do... With the church, and what I'm what I'm saying is this: I'm not considering tithing, but I'm saying all the organizations that help. Well, and, and when I I was volunteer. Ra I was raised LDS, and that was like one of the first questions you'd ask somebody else: like, what is your service project? And when I moved right. out of state, I found out not everybody had service projects, and oh. I felt, oh, okay. But no, this so service is like an elemental thing that goes with with the church right. culture. But um, but it's true because they did they did an aggregate. But most of the religions here are like that. The Catholic Family Services yeah. does amazing stuff. I mean, yeah. but uh, in this particular case, they did an aggregate with volunteer hours, mm -hmm. a donation of goods and services, and then of course the major one is cash. We came in number one across the board on all three of those elements. That's kind of cool. Number freaking one. That's kind of number cool. two was Maryland. Number three Minnesota. Number four Wyoming. Good for you, Wyoming. Number five is Wisconsin. Now, here's something that's interesting. You know how I always go, oh, and the very end, the top last it's five always are always the, the same. southern states? Oh, Not this time. Really? And here's why. What they said is the people below the poverty level give a disproportionately higher amount of money, goods, and services, and, services. and volunteer time right. than any other class in America. A disproportionate amount, amount they probably can't even afford. Well, they're afford. helping each other survive. Where's Mississippi? Uh, M Missouri was 18. Um, Tennessee, which is another harsh really? one, usually, 21. 25 was Arkansas. Um, and uh, Mississippi was 37. But here's what's so interesting. The final top five were some of the wealthiest states in the nation. Hawaii, Rhode Island, Nevada, Louisiana, and uh, well, and Arizona. Those are the bottom of the top. Those are the bottom. They are the five of the wealthiest states in the nation, and they were the least likely to volunteer or donate or give money. Rhode Island, money. Nevada, Louisiana, Hawaii. I mean, Hawaii, hello? Rhode Island? Isn't that interesting? Yeah, and, and, and aren't they going to be surprised when everybody puts in their service hours for them to calm their volcanoes down? Just a thought. It's not their fault. But I just oh, no, that, no, it's not their fault, but they're going to need some help. I just thought that was a really interesting dynamic, though, that it goes back to the fact that, that the people who have the least might be the most willing to share. And I thought that was really good. It beautiful. is. It's a good message. And too. also, good on you. We did pretty good on this one. Very nice, very nice. Uh, coming up next, uh, Hollywood. Uh, someone strips it all off on the Con Film Festival red carpet. Very daring. Very bold. Naked as a jaybird. We're no, gonna... no, they weren't no? bad. No. no, there was no nudity. We'll be disappointed. Well, there was some nudity. Coming up next. Just not the parts you think. Yeah. Yes. We're brought to you by Stay Fit Wellness Clinic. If you're tired of feeling sick and tired, it's time to make an appointment with Dr. Bowden for a new holistic health plan to make you feel better. Lose weight, sleep well at stayfitwellnessclinic.com. 
and by Magic Wash with two locations in South Ogden and Layton. Come in for the ceramic car wash that keeps your car cleaner longer by sheeting all the dirt and the water off your nice shiny finish. Welcome back to the Todd and Aaron Daily Stream. It is time for the Hollywood Connection. Hollywood Connection brought to you by Connect Heating and Air. They have a $39 special right now to tune up your air conditioner, take a look at your uh, your swamp cooler. I've seen all the other specials that are like $59. Bucks. No, no, go to these guys, utahheatingandcooling.com. Okay, no, so there was, I guess there might be some nudity if you think about it. Nudity. Probably not, but some. Con Film Festival. Well, here's, here's something that's really interesting. There are dress codes at the Con Film Festival. I didn't know that. Which really stunned me. I'm like, seriously? And I can understand. What do you mean? What do you mean? Like, not not too much they, skin? No, they, they want formal wear. I mean, you were expected to be in formal wear. They right. don't want any of this casual, hey, this is in California. I'm wearing, I'm going bare chested. But here's the one that irritates me. Yoga pants, probably not. They have a very strict rule that women are required to wear heels. Okay. That's a crap dress code. You, you, don't, get okay. to, you don't get a force women into wear it. Okay. If they're dressed nicely, you don't get to go, you have to wear heels. So Kristen Stewart did her own little protest. Kristen Stewart, of course, from Twilight. Right. Look, there she is with Jacob. And her love, her little shiny sparkly love. Sorry. Where did you I, go I didn't there? like the Twilights as much, but those were her boys. Can we go back? Twilight. Okay, so going back to the point of this, God. Um, she was walking the red carpet, which is like clearly the most visible space. She right. was wearing the horrible spikes that all the women are, and you know what my feet are like, what we call red carpet foot. Yeah, I, I, I can't, can't even get my feet back into I them by the end of the night. I can't even tell you, Erin, uh, we'll do charity work or we MC stuff, and Erin will be at the podium and she'll be talking to everybody, and I look down and she's taken her shoe off and is dangling it off her heel because it hurts so much. And I can't even tell you, like from Lakai, I can tell you exactly how many, how many steps give it a there are right? between the back door at Lakai and the parking lot because I carried her the entire way. Sorry. And I go, why do you wear shoes that hurt you? And it's like, it's beauty is art and art is pain. Beauty is pain, I'm sorry. But in any case, apparently so there, was, there was quite Quite the shock, and everyone was very shocked What's and that? horrified. And one of the, 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 you know, the red carpet guys, whatever they call them, was like, "Ma'am, you need to put your, your shoes back on. You need to." Because I'm holding my high heels. You told me I had to have high heels. You didn't require that I wear them. And so they had to stand by and let her go in. And I'm thinking that is like the most antiquated thing I've ever heard in 2018. You know, the Oscars Unless wear high heels. The Oscars should not have that rule, and they should not just because of one person, and that would be Jennifer Lawrence, who has tumbled her way to the stage. I love her so much. Three times. I, I love and, her. And as a matter of fact, the second, the big stare is going right up to the stage, right where you're going to accept your award. And she crashed Turned into it. it. Yeah. And then the second time, oh, they yeah. actually had two guys there who were kind of, we're here for you. And they missed. And she hit the floor again. And then she I should not. I love her so much. I, just I couldn't do her. it. I couldn't walk in those. I, but, well, just think how excited you are. And you're shaking and you're freaking out anyway. And you have a gown that's like all over the place. I love Jennifer so much. They should, they should take that rule away. Uh, this has like got to be the worst thing ever. Okay, Prince Harry, Meghan Markle. Getting married. Right. Now, you know there, there's now a, a ridiculous level of scrutiny on her background, on her friends, on her family, where she came from. Right. You know, people are interviewing schoolmates from, like, the seventh grade. Right, a dog she used to own. You know, and so, so you're, and he said, woof, it was yes. woof life. Yeah, I know. What? Oh, really? Nice. Really? After all your dog jokes? Yeah, you're good. That was not bad. You're good. And so you know that there's going to be a weak link somewhere. You know it. It had to be her father. And now... This, this is, is what he, they're saying he did. This is so not classy. So this he, is so not classy. Okay, and so. here's the worst part. I didn't realize this. Uh, Megan's half-sister was the one who encouraged him. Um, he went to a, a tabloid magazine, approached him, and said, we want to stage photos of you, like, packing, getting ready for the wedding, and talking about and walking getting, your daughter down the aisle. And, and get through the front window of a shop, getting uh -huh. fitted for a suit. Uh -huh. And so it's, but they staged all the photos and it's all presented as real life and blah, blah, blah. And he was like caught spontaneously. He got money. And they paid him a buttload of money to do it. Now his, her half sister's claiming, well, it'll help improve your image, dad, because apparently he's got a lot of stuff in his background. So it was very funny. So they, al they allowed him to 
save face by saying, I don't feel right about attending the wedding now because I accepted all this money and so you know, I he's felt not going. guilty. And basically, they had caught him. So right, he, right. But basically, Suddenly he was apologizing no, once again. Basically, caught. the word is this the queen said he's not coming. <gasps> I'm sorry. When the father of the bride gets bought out by the tabloids, can you imagine what he's going to do on the real thing? Daisy, can the queen just point people out and say they're not going to the wedding? Yeah, they cut their heads off. They cut their heads off, he said. Probably not. They probably won't go that far. They cut their heads off. I mean, that is just like... That is just like the worst. All ever. the good old days where we cut people's heads off. But it's like, it's your dad. Your dad sold you out for right, a tabloid let's... sum. Right. I mean, and now who's going to walk her down the aisle? And it's like... Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And, you know, and they had a, like, a shaky relationship a bit. And there's some family think, issues. I didn't even think of but that. But yeah, who's going to walk her down the aisle now? Oh, my gosh. But it's like, dude, you sold out. Really? I don't care how much money oh. a tabloid offered you. You really sold out on your own daughter. Oh, you your own daughter. Now you're going to get your head cut off. Do you remember out. this? Do you remember what this reminds me of? Brian Reynolds <laughs> and Blake Lively. Yes. And Brian Reynolds is one of the biggest stars, like in the world. Right, right, right. Um, and somebody had sold pictures of their baby boy, yeah. put them up on the tab, the tablets, and they were everywhere. Right, and they'd right. be trying to protect his his privacy. Right. It was his brother. His own brother sold, sold baby pictures, pictures of his nephew for money. Oh, I remember this. He was heartbroken. And he even said it. He said that was the worst thing. He says it was my brother. It was the worst thing. Oh. Can you imagine? It's like your immediate family. It's like I, I will assume everybody else is going to do something horrible and all. Right, if right. If they did it to us, I'd go, yeah, it's you know. But your own family. Oh my gosh. Your brother and your dad. It's, it's like, like winning the lottery, and all of a sudden you, you find out who everybody is in your family, yeah, and you already knew it. And the ones who want to plot to kill you. Well, now and, okay, and let's make her feel a little better. Um, Jimmy Carter had Billy. Billy Bob. Billy Bob. The President of the United States of America yeah. had, a, had a brother who was awesome Billy Bob, redneck. which is awesome, which I think was, it was the most entertaining thing. And he didn't do bad things, but he... He just mostly scratched his stomach and sat on a porch. He was awesome. And he made Billy beer, and he capitalized on that, which was horrible beer, um, and is still not a collector's item, as my... My, people might think. And then there's Bill Clinton. Then there's Bill Clinton's Roger. brother, Roger. Roger was a loose cannon. Todd he, and I interviewed him once. Yeah. During the presidency, as a matter of fact. Evidently, him and the president like to hang out in the kitchen, eat sandwiches, and drink beer. In their underwear. In their underwear. It was a great interview. But you didn't hear much from him. And now we have this. And now mm. you're like, he's not going. I can't imagine this. He's not going unless he wasn't going to walk her down the aisle anyway. I think that was the plan that he was going to. But the point is, is that the queen does have the right to say that. It's like, because if you got, if you sold out that fast, oh. I mean, because you know that's like maybe the intermediate oh. offer. That's not even like the $10 million yeah. offer. You know that he's going to pull something. He would have like a concealed camera or something. Oh, during. no. You know he would. And the queen was is well within her rights to go, no, you can't come. She's going to cut his head off. And I feel so bad for Meghan Markle because you know this is just like, oh, really? She goes, oh, so soon? So soon, Dad? Already. Really? We're not even married yet? You couldn't hold off and then blurt it all out? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. All right. All right, let's go to Daisy. She <laughs> also has not been beheaded by the Queen, which Yay. is good. She's in the Gephardt De Daily Newsroom, and, of course, she's got some pretty impressive stuff to offer. But first, the new Millennium uh, Financial Group, uh, what will a rate hike mean to you in terms of your finances? Well, these are the people who can tell you. Utah's Financialplanner.com. Also, by Stay Fit Wellness Group. Now, I'm so excited. I'm going in for my blood analysis, and they're doing a full-body makeover for me, and I'll tell you all about it because this is how you do it now. You want your entire life to be better, and you can do that with Stay Fit Wellness Group. And also, Think and McGregor Mortgage is Made Simple. Just go to think-mcgregor.com for more information. Daisy, my dear, what's going on right now? Thanks, Todd Naren. Here's what's making news in the U.S. and around the world Tuesday, May 15th on GephardtDaily.com. A Chinese pilot was partially sucked out of his cockpit at 32,000 feet after the windscreen broke on the Sichuan Airlines jet, authorities said Tuesday. The flight's captain said the co-pilot was partially expelled from the aircraft when the window broke on the Airbus A319 during a flight from Qingqing to Lhasa, Tibet on Monday. The Civil Aviation Administration of China said the co-pilot received minor injuries. A flight attendant was also injured, but none of the 119 passengers were, officials added. 
the South Korean government could request the North to allow nuclear inspectors to attend the dismantlement of its nuclear test site at Pyongyang-ri after Tokyo and Washington expressed concerns an, an audience of journalists may not be enough for the event planned for later this month. North Korea has invited foreign journalists to attend the demolition, including eight from South Korea. Sources in Seoul's foreign ministry told a local news service there are plans to raise the issue of nuclear inspectors or experts at the senior level into Korea talks planned for Wednesday. And First Lady Melania Trump is recovering well from surgery to treat a benign kidney condition, President Donald T Trump said Tuesday. Our great First Lady is doing really well, Trump said in a tweet. Thank you so much for the love and support. The President said the First Lady would leave the hospital in two to three days. She's recovering at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center in Beth Bethesda after un undergoing an embolism procedure which starves the blood supply to the affected area area. And time now for a look at your Wasatch Front weather brought to you by Brio Technologies, Utah's number one audiovisual specialists, and by Magic Wash, home of the high-tech, long-lasting ceramic car wash with outlets in South Ogden and Layton. Temperatures will hit the mid-70s Tuesday and there's only a small chance of rain. Then temps hang out in the mid to upper 70s for the rest of this week with rain moving in Friday and Saturday. For more news 24-7, check out getparkdaily.com. Todd and Aaron, back to you. Thank you so much, Daisy. Uh, you have a story. Um, let me do New Millennium Financial Group first sure. because this is pretty cool. Uh, new Millennium, I'm, I was thinking about this. They were talking uh, about the rate hikes on a lot of the new the new loan products that they're coming out with, and they were talking about how this was going to impact retirement. And I was sitting there thinking, I have no idea about the correlation of those two things and why it would happen. And I'm the one who kind of manages our money. and it's Both so dollars. Mm-hmm. And that's a little scary when it's your responsibility to make sure that your family's going to be okay, that you have retirement, that your kids could go to college if they wanted to, or they could get a start. And so this is a big deal. And maybe you're saving to buy a house and you don't know what you're supposed to do. Utah'sFinancialPlanner.com. Go there. They have a free analysis to get you started. And these people are spectacular. And they can cover all aspects of your life and make sure that you are set for your goals and dreams. And they'll ask you questions you would not have thought of before, but that are super, super important. So it's New Millennium Financial Group, Utah'sFinancialPlanner.com. Okay, this is so creepy. How creepy is it? Okay, lurking about backyards okay. in the neighborhood of Awataki. Awataki. You know, very nice area, very right. very attractive. Right. Every, as a matter of fact, it is such a nice area that anyone tends to have motion detector alarms, lights go off. Who's the lurker? What's what the lurker? What? She said there was a body back there, so I knew there was someone in the yard, and I jumped out of bed and called 911, and she was watching him on her screen, going, right. holy crap, you know, on her monitor. Right, right. And I, he did something creepy. He was, all of her sheets and, and her clothes and her underies were on lines out in the back. She liked to air dry her clothes. Oh, old school. He was picking his sheets off the line and smelling them. He was sniffing all of her laundry. And not just the sheets, I'm and then imagining. And walks away. Right. So this is this is the weird thing now. He has actually done this like eight different times now. So everyone's to different like, people? Yeah, everyone's like, I'm not air drying anything anymore. No. And so it got weird enough that he actually broke into someone's basement and he was caught in surveillance there. Smelling someone's underwear. Smelling the laundry. It's not even the underwear, though. It's like sheets, it's blankets, it's shirts. It should be a commercial for Bounce. He's just... The Bounce, the, it's like, the dude, sheet that goes in the dryer. Dude, you're sniffing my laundry. Yeah. So everybody's freaking out, going, well, how can it escalate now? Now he's broken into the house to sniff the laundry. What's this next? Is true. Like up to my linen closet to sniff the linen? In I your mean, bed? I mean, smelling your sheets? Your pillow is delightful. Yeah. Well, I, I do, I must say one thing. There are certain scents, and you know one of them really well, there's certain scents that the smell of clean laundry is mm -hmm. a very positive thing for your brain. It's wonderful, yeah. Mowing a lawn, huge. Pumpkin pie, huge. Certain scents do that, and maybe he just needs that. This is how he's elevating the levels of dopamine in his brain, thus not needing antidepressants. You know, they don't give you pillowcases in prison. There's a lot of reasons for that. Stop smelling my jet stuff. It's yeah, awful. Just, just stop. All, All right. right, coming up next. This is like the worst prom ever. Why would you do this? Worst prom ever, we'll tell you about it next.
We're brought to you by Connect Heating and Air. Go to utahheatingandcooling.com for their $39 air conditioner tune-up special. Some care now could make the difference in hundreds of dollars of energy bills this summer. And by New Millennium Financial Group. Take your feeble financial health back to a more robust position with a consult with New Millennium Financial Group. They're offering a complimentary financial analysis to get you started at utahsfinancialplanner.com. Okay, welcome back. It is the Todd and Aaron Daily Stream. It is Tuesday. Well, now talk, you could be watching this anytime. It could be Christmas. Happy Christmas. Go open the presents. <laughs> um, we, we're just talking about this uh, proms. Uh, senior prom. Uh, did you do anything elaborate? What did you guys do? Uh, you know, the thing we did, we our prom itself was not elaborate. Ours was up at the um, Utah State Capitol. No, I see this all the time. And we've that before. As a matter of fact, our cute girl from Woods Cross uh-huh. with her big, scary, controversial Chinese dress uh, that was also held up at the Capitol. All those pictures were the rotunda. So they have music and people dance mm-hmm. and, there's, band and there's, and there's dancing. punch. But you know where we really went all out is invitations. It was really Oh, not that. Oh, 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 we were no. All, no, we were all oh, over no. the top on invitations yeah, no. like to various what? proms. Like what? Like say it. Um, one Big guy, poster with the, the words spelled out with candy bars. Oh, no, no, no. That was such an amateur thing. Really? No, mine was much worse. This guy asked me, and so, and I had to top what he did, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember what it was, but it was exhausting. Oh, yeah, he filled my car with balloons, and they all had written on them, would you go to prom with me? Right. And I'm like, really? Right. That's right. good, though. That's good. So I baked chocolate chip cookies, and I wrote yes in chocolate frosting on each one of them, and it took me like uh, three days and put them so... in a basket with a balloon. Uh, like, yes. So nice. What did you guys do? How did, wish did I knew you, do you were fancy? in high school. I wish I knew you were in high school. My life would have been so easier. <laughs> well, I would have been a junior high, and then we would have both been arrested. For going to a dance? Well, I would have been in junior high, and you would have been a senior. I might even have been in elementary school. Oh, shush. Shush. Oh, I don't mean really? like that. I'm oh. Sorry. No, I'm going to get my walker and just get out of here. No, I didn't mean to like that. Okay, but did you guys do like fancy invitations to stuff? No. Because you told me that you used to put pumpkins on the porches of girls you liked. That wasn't okay. for prom. Oh, okay. No. So you would just walk up and go, hey, do you want to go to prom? You didn't I, hung, I hung out with a gang, a group of people. And it was just like, we going? Yeah. We just sign up and pay our money and go and rent a, a tux. And we'd go and there'd be music and stuff. So it was and more like a clump of you. Yeah, like Charlie Brown, when they move, they move together. Like that, that's us. That's us. Um, well, I saw a picture of you at prom with Brenda, and you both yeah. look beautiful. Yeah. She, you guys looked really nice. We were, um, I, was, uh, I had the ruffle blue. I think you were in burgundy, I think, because she had a really pretty burgundy pattern dress. I don't know. But I think that um, it's, I think it's, I don't think it's but East they, Coast thing. But were you know, they fancy? I mean, were proms, like, did they do wild, elaborate decorations? No, they did crepe paper like everybody else in the world. So it wasn't like, it was just like serviceable prom. It wasn't like... Well, a lot of times they'll rent, they, we would rent out, um, I forget what thing it was, but they'd rent out a restaurant. Oh, fun. And you go to the restaurant. And then yeah. one of the big things was, um, is at the end of prom, um, if you were proper, you would take your lady home, and then you would return in about two hours and pick her up and then go and watch the sunrise on a beach on the ocean. I didn't get to have that. Well, it'd be a hell of a drive for you. <laughs> it'd be like 14 hours. I'm so jealous. Yeah. You always get the fun stuff. And as a group, we'd all hang out there and we'd watch the sun come up and it was great. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Well, I... I, they've actually been doing a ton more expense now of really trying to like overdue on prom and they're raising more money and their parents are throwing in more cash because they want like this, especially senior prom has got to be the thing. Why? The big thing. I oh, don't okay. know, but they yeah. are, they're like this. Right. Well, there's a Florida high school that like went way over the top, way freaking over the top. It was what? a jungle theme. Oh, for the, for, okay. Yeah, so you know, I they've, got, the themes. they've got like all the greener and everything and they rented potted plants and all this Vines. stuff. And, Everywhere. And yes. Now, here was interesting. They actually had surprise animal guests. They had two macaw parrots. They're exotic, oh, you know, beautiful nice. long feathers. Nice, and, nice. you know. and then they had a lemur 
A lemur. A lemur? Yeah. I love lemurs. The lemurs, they jump sideways. They're so, they had the big, wide, starry eyes. And then they had a fennec fox. A fox. And then... So they have all these animals at a prom. Though. And there's music pulsing, and there's hip-hop going so loud that the floor is shaking. Right, you right, know that, right, and tables right, are going right. across. And they had a caged tiger. A what? They had a caged tiger. A live, a live and, tiger. A live caged tiger, and the couples are taking their prom pictures next to it, like, tiger! Meanwhile, yeah. the tiger, all he can hear is... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, except for there was one one brother, Marie Christine was there, and her brother was there as well, and he was the only one going, this is really kind of sick, guys. you got really this loud. tiger, and it's freaking him. And he's really upset, and his mother was furious, saying that uh, he, the tiger was being mistreated, that you could tell he was incredibly in stress, and he's going back and forth. And I don't think tigers like hip-hop. I could be wrong. I, but like they and she actually took this little video of it because she's like this sucks and put it up on Facebook and so oh man it got to the point where here like, we go the school administration had to apologize right. and the vice principal whose brilliant idea it was got demoted and but it was just like why would you think to right. do that why don't you put your mascot in a cage we've had elements you know we've had places before where we've like maybe had our friends from Scales and Tails come and they've brought a few well trained snakes. But it was never this horrible, dark, loud, crowded place, yeah. you know, where a mammal would be like. So don't do that. But that was just like the worst idea ever. And she said there, and she said there were big gouts of fire going up, <coughs> up all over the place from the torches. Five hundred screaming teenagers. It's like no, that would be abusive to me. Yeah. I mean, so way to go, way to go, <coughs> vice principal. So don't do that. Don't do that. All right, we're done. I think we are. You guys have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Let me do